intuition, creativity, memory, and conscience. This piece illuminates the relationships of intuition, creativity, memory, and conscience. You can further illuminate those relationships by using the setup, Tetraseed Transformation Instructions, or for really high-powered results, the Middle Way Memory Matrix Ritual. With all the possible pairs of each of those functions, intuition, creativity, memory, and conscience. That would be most illuminating. And jumpstart or make more vivid your intuitive sense. There are six pairs. Start with memory and conscience. Intuition is a form of innate knowing or sensing. Innate means naturally present in oneself. Intuition has to do with awareness of emerging and immediate conditions and to the intelligence doing the choosing, moving, or acting in the midst of those conditions. Conscience is also a form of innate knowing or sensing. Conscience has to do with the memory of behavior and the consequences. Ring a bell? Creativity is a form of emergent action or movement into action. Emergent, as I mean it, means coming into existence. Action, as I mean it, involves purpose or intended outcome. Creativity is purposeful action and its results coming into existence. Creativity is not haphazard. It is imbued with an intuitive and intuitable sense of form, an intuited feeling of intent, not an expression constructed of words and remembered things experimentally without an intention being present. So-called experimental creativity is creativity in word only and leaves one dumbfounded rather than intuitively awakened. Note the distinction. Guilty conscience seeks to exclude information. It strives to get out from under the thumb of error and the compulsion to correct it. Compulsion, which may seem to come from outside, as in someone making me feel guilty, but actually comes from myself. The draw or attraction of the eros of integrity or wholesomeness from which we feel we have departed, abandoned, betrayed. Clear conscience allows information to come in. Information coming in is the essential nature of creativity and of intuition. Creativity doesn't come from us. It comes to us and through us in acts of creation. Information coming in innate knowledge, intuition, is not made from pre-existing knowledge from outside sources or guesswork combined with the hope of correctness. But we perceive it directly, unreasonably, mysteriously, obviously, vividly, blatantly. These distinctions may seem murky to those who have a pile-up of guilty conscience and whose intuition is blocked. Their innate knowing is obscured by the effort not to know guilty conscience. Or it may be that one has never cultivated intuition, and so its ways remain as yet unknown. You can feel the connection between guilty conscience and the effort not to know. For that reason, guilty conscience blocks both intuition and creativity. It leads to stupidity and to repetitive error, or to being an ignoramus. Until the guilt is resolved by corrective action, repentance, which is not merely an emotional gesture, but an action that carries out the emotional gesture in ways that have consequence. Intuition is subtle. It's a feeling of the type one has when having pangs of conscience 
an innate feeling of what one should or should not have done, or when one loves someone, or the pleasure one feels listening to music. Creating music is primarily an intuitive process. However, intuition is different from guilt or guilt's absence, more than romantic love. It is the pre-feeling of the consequence of a course of action in a situation, of the fittingness of an action, as one would sense in advance for the good of one's beloved. To test my words, use your imagination. Daydream. Remember a situation about which you feel guilty and imagine two courses of action, the one about which you feel guilty and the other you might have taken. Do that now. Take 30 seconds. There. There is a distinct difference of feeling between what one should have done and what one should not have done. It's more than guilt, isn't it? Creativity and imagination are obviously related. Creativity is the activity that makes imagination tangible. Tangible means having durable existence in a form someone else can perceive. Creative flow occurs for those whose attention is open and occurs more so for those who do not merely have flights of imagination, but also act to create something tangible from those imaginings. Imagination and memory are closely related. Imagination is incoming, a possible future, an alternate present. Memory is outgoing an approximation of an actual past event. Memory fades out. Imagination and memory are the incoming and outgoing of the same type of thing. To remember something, you must imagine it. Because it is remembered, it is, it is easier to access. Imagining something new takes more effort, except in dreams, when memory recedes. Daydream, to test my words. Remember something. Now imagine it. Alternate and compare. Take ten seconds. Do that now. There. When we stifle conscience, we stifle memory. By stifling memory, we also stifle imagination. Since we are stifling the part of memory that involves imagining the event about which we feel guilty. If you want to be more creative, locate and correct the areas in yourself about which you have guilt. If you want to use intuition reliably, locate and correct the situations about which you have guilt. Open the floodgates of attention. Summary. The key characteristic of guilt is persistence and our persistence in suppressing guilt. Persistence also characterizes knowledge to which we are attached. We want to make it persist. We want already to be right. It's reason and reasonableness. Reason and reasonableness also underlie guilt. Reason and reasonableness depend upon memory, what we believe we know, as does guilt. If you want to direct your life by intuition, clean up your life. Then acknowledge your reasoning in any moment of choosing a course of action 
and let go of the decision you may reach by reasoning to consult your intuitive imagined sense of the outcomes of your options it's an unreasonable action that you must test in life level action to develop confidence in intuition remember intuition is not an emotional preference it's a sense of how things may turn out as you imagine each course of action or your sense of things happening felt at a distance felt at a distance if you don't feel it you don't feel it be honest with yourself however you can use the tetra seed transformation instructions to awaken and clarify intuition intuition trumps reason so said albert einstein by the way it's unreasonable though sometimes reason may justify intuition you may act reasonably instead of intuitively particularly if you don't yet trust intuition you may think you're playing it safe however the force of reason fades and the intuitive feeling you had about the situation doesn't fade and is what you will have to live with after you have taken action test my words those who do not trust intuition rely entirely upon memory and reason they are either blocked by guilt and so do not trust their innate knowing or have never knowingly developed and relied upon intuition and aside homological conceit homological conceit is the attitude of because I believe it and say so it must be right homo means self logical means having to do with words homological having to do with my words conceit the judgment that i am better than plus the unwillingness to allow that i may be wrong it's self-reinforcing one's own memories one's own knowledge and automatically invalidating others we are experiencing an epidemic of homological conceit particularly among those in power who may seek power just so they are immune to being questioned or second-guessed it's interesting that those who do so so often act unwisely <laughs>